Lots happening right now in our region. Perch patterns have been working really well. The bite has been good. Just keep snapping it off the box. The down imaging, the side imaging. There's a lot of different variations and different ways to rig this. Oh, yeah! Look at this guy. They are heavy. Oh, look at that. <laughs> On today's show, we're talking fish finding logic. This is Angling Buzz TV. I'm Troy Linder. I'm Jim Edlin. You know, I think the number one thing is location, location, location. When I go to a body of water, if I'm not familiar with it, I'd rather know where they are than what they're biting on. That's the number one thing. And speeding up that fish finding process is crucial. No doubt, Troy. The importance of location, you gotta find the fish to catch them. Yeah. But you can have the most expensive outboard motor, boat, electronics. But if you fish the same old spots year after year, it's all for naught. Yeah, it is. So let's take a closer look at fish finding logic. Location, location, location. It could be argued that finding the fish is the most significant piece of the puzzle. Yes, it's pretty hard to catch them if they're not there. Good thing we're living in the year 2017 and have some pretty cool tools at our disposal to find fish faster than ever before. Over the past couple decades, we've seen lots of technologies come to market that have changed the face of fishing. GPS high definition lake mapping, down and side looking technologies, and underwater cameras to name just a few. The good news here is that fishing electronics have become affordable, with flagship technologies trickling down faster as companies race to introduce new products each year. Yes, high end fishing electronics are no longer just limited to the pros of the sport. But there's more to it than purchasing and installing fish finders on your boat. Successful anglers know how to harness the technology for specific situations, like the seasonal indicators that give us a general idea of where fish should be located. For example, in spring, high definition lake maps, from built in charts to must have map cards from companies like Lake Master and Navionics, can help us dial in a potentially productive spots quickly and efficiently. Today's maps give anglers the ability to essentially pre-fish before they even get to the landing, calling up lake areas in a specific depth range, as well as get a bird's eye view look at bays, neck downs, flats, and areas where moving waters enter a larger lake, all high probability spots in spring for a variety of fish species. But there's another tool at our disposal for great spring fishing, and it doesn't cost an arm and a leg. In fact, it could just save your eyes. You got it. Nothing beats a good pair of polarized sunglasses in the spring for locating cover and fish in the shallows. Come summer, it's a good idea to spend some time watching your 2D sonar, as well as down and side looking technologies to find the right fish attracting stuff. Breaks, weed lines, underwater points, creek channels, rocks, sunken islands and humps. Yes, this is when fishing electronics really become your eyes underwater. As summer progresses into fall and weeds begin to break down, fish continue to move, sometimes deeper, sometimes shallower. Once again, your GPS mapping can quickly help you dial in productive locations. For example, narrow map contour lines signify steep breaks, which provide an easy movement of fish from deep to shallow and vice versa. Fall is also a good time to utilize side looking technology to find rock piles and weeds in deeper water bottom transitions, and forge holding wood. It's nothing to idle around, drop a few waypoints, and set up a milk run. Yes, when it comes to successful angling, location is still as important as ever. But lucky for us, we have more tools than ever to maximize our time on the water. And just when you think you've seen it all, new technologies emerge that continue to educate us all, providing a more detailed glimpse of what's really going on below the water. And right now across the upper Midwest with the warmer weather, the weed growth is really starting to take place. I like to fish bass a lot of the times and up here it's weeds, it's all weeds, it's weed edges and a lot of lakes are just blanketed with weeds. So not only is it crucial to know where the edge is, it's also important to know what kinds of weeds hold fish. Very true, Troy. Depending where you are in the angling buzz region, there could be a lot of different things going on. Other fish are setting up on those deeper weed edges, walleyes, panfish, pike, whatever. Recently, we've been fishing walleyes around isolated cabbage. It's mm -hmm. not real tall where we are in the north country, but with polarized glasses, you can see that stuff. Mm -hmm. Well, the other thing you can do, of course, is drop an underwater camera. It helps us find fish faster, and I know a lot of bass guys are using them to their benefit, too. 
That's an interesting topic. You know, a lot of bass tournament guys, they utilize underwater cameras, not only for finding fish, understanding the types of weeds that are down there, understanding forage, they'll actually put them on poles, look under docks, drop them on deep rock piles to see if it's walleyes or bass. And having a camera under the water definitely shortens that fish finding process. This Underwater Minute is brought to you by Aquaview, the original underwater camera. The underwater world is filled with edges, physical changes in the underwater environment that focuses fish movement and behavior. The shoreline is in effect the irregular edge of the lake where the domain of fish begins, visible to both man above and fish beneath the surface. The bottom of the lake forms an inconsistent edge featuring complex variations in depth, bottom content, and weed growth. Clearly visible to the fish, but challenging for anglers to interpret without the aid of modern electronics. Drop-offs to deep water form edges against which fish congregate, travel, and feed. But probably the most misunderstood edge is the surface. Viewed from above, the surface floats your boat. Yet from the fish's perspective below, it forms a ceiling against which they can trap bait fish. No matter where fish swim, edges abound and how fish relate to edges dictate their daily lifestyle. The better you can understand and visualize these edges, the better you can grasp how fish relate to them and how and where to catch them. Lake Vermilion. Explore. Relax. Reconnect. Minnesota's most beautiful lake. Whoa. Get hooked on our trophy wall. That's a beauty. Bass. This is my favorite fish. Musky fish. That's a beauty there. Things to do? You'll never get bored. Rooms with a view? We got them. Lake Vermilion. Four seasons of fun. Excel Outdoors, storage solutions for sportsmen. Cargo rack. Cargo trunk. Bucket caddy. Jaws of Ice, the best auger carrier ever. Hunting, the ladder stand caddy. Fishing game boards and the extruder board. Organize your life outside. Excel Outdoors. Sport Fish Michigan is your number one source for top charter captains and fishing guides in Michigan. Our network of professionals are full-time anglers with years of experience providing customers with the best possible fishing trip services. Fish for trout, salmon, steelhead on Lake Michigan or its famous tributary rivers, the Traverse City area's world-class smallmouth bass, walleye fishing on the Detroit River and Saginaw Bay or Northern Michigan spectacular ice fishing. We do it all. Sport Fish Michigan. Get out. Get bit. Welcome back to Angling Buzz. It's time now for a highlight destination feature. This week, we're going to Leech Lake. I fish there a lot, absolutely love the place. It's very diverse. You're talking like boy bait, slop fishing for bass, walleyes, uh, pike, smallmouth bass on the rocks, muskies up in the reeds on the rocks. When I go there, I usually have about you know 12 rods. It's one of those <laughs> rare places where I got like a topwater slop rod. I got a pop jig and wall idea. I got a little topwater prop for smallmouth and then the big guns for the muskies. You know, where else can you do it all? Mm -hmm. I love Leech Lake. You've got those big black crappies, mm -hmm. big bluegills, shallow water walleye fishing. Last year we had just an amazing walleye opener. I love Leech. All right, let's get right to it. Here's our highlight destination feature, Leech Lake. Minnesota's Leech Lake has an intriguing history. Some 10,000 years ago, a glacier stopped at the western edge of an ancient valley. As a result, Minnesota would become home to over 10,000 lakes, including waters the Ojibwe people referred to as Lake Abundant with Bloodsuckers. Today it's simply called Leech, over 100,000 acres of fishing paradise. In the early 1700s, 
The Leech Lake area was a battle site between the Ojibwe and Sioux, clashes that eventually pushed the Sioux west. In 1882, the Army Corps of Engineers started building Leech Lake Dam and ultimately raised the water level enough to connect six separate lakes. By 1895, the first tourists began to arrive in earnest. The lake's history continues today, countless anglers visiting year after year to make fishing memories. With 195 miles of shoreline and a dozen islands, there's plenty to explore. Crappies, jumbo perch, pike, bass, and high numbers of walleyes and muskies patrol the sportsman's paradise. Right now, anglers are reporting big black crappies and the lake's many wild rice and reed lined bays. But Leech's sleeper bite is definitely its incredible largemouth bass action. For fans of scrappy bronze backs, Leech also has the right stuff, making the lake a real win win. What is the lake's walleye and muskie fishing that's made the lake legendary? Since opener, anglers have been reporting a great walleye bite on relatively shallow flats, rocks, and points throughout the lake, with plenty of eaters and good numbers of larger fish too. Following the Minnesota muskie opener just a couple days ago, predator hunters have started working the lake for early season trophies. We have no doubt the lake will kick out some giants again this year. Yes, no matter your favorite species, Leech Lake is a bucket list location. Troy, there's a lot of truth to that. You know, based here in Minnesota, Leech Lake is in our backyard, but for the rest of the Angling Buzz region, it's a world-class fishery that needs to be on everybody's bucket list. Yes, it does. And right now, we have the first of our Buzz Bite reports from around the region. Hi, I'm Captain Ben Wolf with Sportfish Michigan, and I've got this week's Angling Buzz report for the state of Michigan. It's early June and we have some fantastic options all across the state for you. You know, one of my favorite things to do this time of year is actually to go panfish fishing, whether it's perch or bluegill or even sunfish. You know, you get up in the shallows, they're a lot of fun on really light tackle or on fly rod, they're, you know, they're possible too. They're just a ball of fun, especially in this early June period. For anglers up in the Traverse City area, Grand Traverse Bay is the place to be. Light tackle, casting blade baits or jigging spoons for ciscos, lots of lake trout, and big, big whitefish. Those are great options this time of year. Bass fishing all across the state remains red hot, both for spawn and post-spawn fish. Depending on the size of the body of water that you're on, you know, you can see fish anywhere from two all the way down to 15 feet or so. For more information, or if you're looking for a captain and guide in the state of Michigan, give Sportfish Michigan a call, or check us out on the web, sportfishmichigan.com. That's the one thing from those reports from Michigan that, that Ben Wolf sends us. Just the, the incredible variety of fishing opportunities there. Just amazing. Our next report, we're heading over to Lake Mille Lacs with Tony Roach. You know, one thing about Mille Lacs Lake, when you get into springtime, the fishing is fantastic. Whether you like fishing bass with crankbaits or jerkbaits or fishing plastics, this is a great bite for everybody. Man, that's a nice one too. We've been getting a lot of nice fish this year. All size ranges, but this is a nice walleye. Again, I'm throwing impulse plastics using the new Northland current cutter head jig. I really like the way it falls fast, especially when you're pitching on some of these steeper breaks. It just never gets old. I love pitching jigs and plastics for walleyes, pitching crankbaits, jerkbaits for bass. I mean, this time of year is just electric, you know, from opener until let's say late June, early July. It's just. <laughs> You can't beat it. There's just not enough time in the day to fish all these spots. You have a choice, turf or surf. It's fishing season. Welcome to the outdoors. We're baiting, casting, drifting, and limiting out. The outdoors never felt so good. Catch, release, and keepers. The outdoors never tasted so good. It's fishing season. We are outdoors. Mills Fleet Farm. 
explore Alexandria, Minnesota. Whether it's a long weekend or a week long loaded with family fun, you'll find plenty of things to do in Alex. Unleash your inner explorer with over 300 lakes, beaches, parks, hundreds of miles of trails, dining, golf, shopping, museums, and history. Alexandria is Minnesota's hidden gem. Go to explorealex.com to find your vacation this season. If you're looking at this, how do you know it's not this? If you see this, how do you know it's not actually this? Trust your AquaView and you'll see the real underwater world. AquaView leads by innovation, first in high definition, first in handheld viewing, the finest underwater optics, the brightest, sharpest screens, the original underwater camera, and the fish finder that puts you on the fish. Welcome back to Angling Buzz. Our next report, we're heading up on the Red River with Brad Durek. Catfishing on the Red River has been just outstanding all year long. That is up until Mother Nature decided to throw us a curveball. A couple weeks back, she gave us 50 degree highs, 48 degree highs, even lows below freezing. And after five or six days of that, the water temperature dropped about 10 degrees. That puts brakes on a good bite. So we've been looking to the shallows, near current, tight, tight to the wood, to rocks, whatever, in about a foot of water, and then laying a couple baits right over the edge of the break, right into the deeper water. As far as baits, we've been really shortening our baits up. We've been working with about one inch square, maybe even a smaller, threaded up a seven knot hook. That makes sure that the fish that are a little bit finicky aren't able to pull it off the hook. They have to bite the hook if they're gonna get the bait. Cool stuff from Brad. Man, finesse catfishing in a foot of water sounds like fun. Yeah, and with, with bait the size of like a little piece of Starburst. Hey, our next report is from Tim Hansky on Leech. This past week on the lake was really good fishing. Saw lots of walleyes, keepers, slot fish alike. The main lake was the best. Um, spots like hardwoods, duck two, duck one, otter tail, pine point, West Goose Flats, Jigging a Shiner was good, and Lindy and a Leech was getting bites too. Heading to the south end of the lake, Annex Reef, uh, around Pelican Island, Huddles, and Bear Island all produce fish too. Anywhere from 6 to 12 feet, and sometimes a little deeper, but make sure you find the bait fish. Don't forget to check out Walker Bay, the windy shoreline starting to show up fish, 16 to 22 feet. Up next, we're joining Billy Rosner on Lake Vermilion. The walleye bite's been holding its own up here. Uh, still catching them on rigs and minnows. Uh, I'm gonna start carrying leeches here now too. Uh, the leech bite is starting on rigs, also on your slip bobber, on some of your reefs that top out and that eight foot stuff. Uh, that's picking up and before long here, we'll be starting to fish crawlers also. Our musky season is open now and uh, this time of year, I like to think small as far as tackle goes and baits. I like uh, casting these smaller blue fox bucktails. I really like the chartreuse colors. Those seem to put muskies in the boat. That's a good color on vermilion. Uh, I like the suic, that chartreuse color again. That's always a good one. The storm flat stick. I really like those early in the season. And then the new 360 GT swim bait. This is awesome, awesome, awesome. So yeah, what Billy's doing for muskies, a lot of guys are doing smaller bucktails on heavy bass gear. Yeah, yeah. Our next report, the Alexandria region with Ben Hiddle. With the water in the mid 60s, I've noticed that the walleyes have been schooling on big sand flats or along a weed edge. Using your electronics to find these schooled up fish is very important. Now when going down a weed edge, I've been using Northland's RZ jig or a Lindy rig with a chartreuse bead or a red hook, tipped with a leech, a crawler, or a shiner looking for these walleyes. When I go along there, long line and with that Lindy rig, I will pull up to the weeds and then I'll pull away from the weeds. And then on the big sand flat, what I'll look for is a weed clump or a, rock, a little rock pile or just like a sand gravel transition to find them fish. And when I find them fish, I'll do the same thing like that weed edge. I'll just drift across them or troll across them long lining with that jig or that Lindy rig to get them fish to bite. 
the Alexandria region, definitely made for live bait rigging. Better have some leeches and crawlers in the boat. Yeah, for sure. And for our final report, we're joining Troy Peterson on Winnebago. Guys, the fish are finally starting to dump back out into the main lake here on Winnebago. And uh, the problem is, is that the water is really, really clear for this time of the year. So a couple different things what we've been doing is on the bright blue sunny days, what we've been doing is pulling slow death around the deeper edges of the uh, reefs and catching some fish that way. Uh, when we do get some wind or early in the morning, late in the evening, low light conditions, some cloud cover, uh, we've been going up on tops of the reefs casting either uh, jigs and crawlers, jigs and leeches, slip bobbers, um, or some of my favorite things to do is cast these plastics. Uh, I've been using these Lunker Hunt Bentos in the natural colors, the perch, uh, shiners, trout perch. Uh, the water's warming up, the temperatures are finally starting to, to cooperate, and uh, it's only going to get better. Many things have been said about rough waters, but few things have been said about a smooth ride. The revolutionary Smooth Moves Ultra is a mechanical suspension system that features a four spring design and a hydraulic shock, providing the most comfortable and durable ride on the market. Through passion, tenacity, and the right equipment, you can overcome even the roughest waters. Because boaters know and follow Minnesota's aquatic invasive species laws, 98% of lakes are not known to have any zebra mussels. 95% are not known to have any kind of invasive animals or plants. Let's keep it this way. Clean aquatic plants and animals from boats, trailers, and equipment. Drain all water from watercraft, including the motor, and keep drain plugs out during transport. Dispose of unused bait properly. Together, we're preventing the spread of aquatic invasive species in Minnesota. Looking for the perfect fishing vacation? Leech Lake, Minnesota. There's over 112,000 acres of water to explore with fantastic walleye, bass, pike, panfish, and trophy muskies. The fishing opportunities are endless. Leech Lake has it all with over 30 resorts, lodges, campgrounds, and hotels line its pristine shores. Plan your trip. It's Minnesota's original up north vacation destination. And now it's time for a cool product segment brought to you by Mills Fleet Farm. Today's show is all about finding fish. These products will definitely do that. We're going to start with the Helix 7 series from Hummingbird. Now these have features like down imaging, side imaging, 360 imaging, chirp technology, also available with Auto Chart Live where you can basically make a map of a lake where there is no map. This is the Helix 7 series from Hummingbird. And pairing with that, well, the Smart Strike cards from Lake Master. They got a whole ton of lakes uh, across the country. With the Smart Strike detail, you can actually do depth highlights, uh, season highlights, you know, throughout different times of year, fish species. It's really cool. The shallow water depth highlight, if you haven't been to a lake before, it'll show you the shallow water areas to avoid that are hazardous and also probably good places to catch fish. And you can get up to one foot contours in some of the HD maps. It's pretty amazing. This is the Lake Master Chips with Smart Strike. And after you catch your fish, well, you need a good fillet board. And better than a piece of wood is definitely something like this from Excel Outdoors, the Sportsman's Board, made of high density polyethylene, which it resists bacteria. It's easy on the knives, it's easy to clean, comes in a few different sizes. This is the panfish model. It's perfect for crappies, panfish, bluegills. They also have different sizes if you're fishing for trout and walleye. This is the Sportsman's Board from Excel Outdoors. And some baits to catch fish. Well, the Impulse Core Swim Bait from Northland Tackle is excellent. It comes in three different sizes. They have bright colors and they have more natural colors if you're fishing in clearer water. And they're also infused with Northland's patented Impulse scent. And jig heads, like I said, jig heads are absolutely necessary pretty much for any type of fish that you target. This is the RZ Jig from Northland Tackle. These are UV coated. They come from sizes as light as 1 32nd ounce all the way up to half an ounce. Another great swim bait is the Storm 360 GT. These can be fished pretty much anywhere for any kind of fish. 
They're available in three different sizes from three and a half inch to five and a half inch. They have great tail action and roll wild from side to side. And a good planer board is definitely a necessity for any walleye fisherman, open water fisherman. This is from Offshore Tackle. This is the OR12. This is the right model. Literally, they come in left and right models. They also run nice and true. If you're fishing in rough water, which usually means that's uh, pretty good walleye weather, these, these run nice and true. Check it out from Offshore Tackle. This is the OR12 planer board. And from Aquaview, the Aquaview 5. Now this is nice, lightweight, compact. Check this out, flip this open, and you have your screen, nice, bright screen, five inch monitor right here. Also has a built-in eight gigabyte DVR to record your video, your photos, your catches. And if you flip it open and close, it shuts on and off to extend the battery life. You can get up to about eight hours of uh, a battery on the, on the uh, rechargeable lithium that's inside of it. Also really neat, 100 feet of cable. So you can drop this down really deep. What's also neat is you can reel it up right there. You got a built-in reel. This is from Aquaview, the Micro Series 5. All of these products are available at fleetfarm.com and your local Mills Fleet Farm store. Hey, there's a wide variety of swim baits on the market today. You know, I love fishing swim baits for walleyes. It's just one of those baits that just simply catches fish all year long. When it comes to fishing swim baits for walleyes, there's really no wrong way to fish them. The biggest thing is coupling the jig head with the right size bait. You know, like I see here, I've got some longer shank jigs. I like to couple those with longer paddle tails, the, the longer swim baits. The shorter shank jigs, I couple with the shorter paddle tails, you know, the two and two and a half inch baits. And that's the biggest thing. And then really there is no wrong way to fish them. It's all about just figuring out what color, what size and what speed and what retriever you're gonna do to put fish in the boat. Oh yeah, good looking fish. Just smack that bait. There we go, nice looking fish. I tell you what, if you wanna have a lot of fun and catch some big fish, try pitching swim baits. You can fish them a lot of different ways, whether you're pitching and ripping them, swimming them back to the boat, there's no wrong way to fish them. We hope you've enjoyed this week's episode and learned some things that'll help you catch more fish right now. And on next week's show, fishing opportunities today. Everything from kayak angling, to bank fishing, to high school bass clubs. That's gonna be a great episode, you don't wanna miss that. And we wanna remind you about aquatic invasive species helping to stop the spread of them. Remember, anytime you leave any body of water, clean, drain, and dry. And be sure to check us out online, anglingbuzz.com. That's where we have all of our guide reports, some extended from inside the show here, a little bit longer, more detailed. We have tips, tactics to help you catch more fish. And you can also enter our sweepstakes presented by Mills Fleet Farm. You can win a fabulous weekend of fishing and fun on Lake Vermilion. Thank you for joining us. I'm Troy Lindner. I'm Jim Edlin. We'll see you out at the boat ramp. This week's Buzz by Report. Tony Roach. Brian Rolson. Lee Talkin here. Brad Durick up here on the Red River. Hop water's been really, really fun. A lot of wallies like that. Giant bluegills. Good luck, everybody. Have fun. We'll see you next week.